Yo, what's good? It's your boy, Trent Gaming. Today's video is going to be like the last one. We are going to interview a very, very special someone, not Kazuki Makuchi. He had his turn. He had his chance to be on the greatest channel on the planet. We are interviewing someone even smarter than him. Who is this special someone, Triff? Special someone, eh? Hey, special someone, eh? Maybe Kazuki Makakuchi makes a second appearance. This person might just be the smartest, most intellect tool of our time. So Nikola Tesla, step aside. Because you got no... You got nothing on my boy coming, bro. Albert Einstein, E equals get the fuck out of here. This guy is the brains behind all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, he is the brains behind the greatest combos known to mankind, and quite arguably, arguably, arguable, and quite arguably, the smartest person on the planet. So if you haven't already, gather up all your best friends, all two of them, call them up, be like, yo, we're the three best friends anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. And then you hit that subscribe button as fast and as hard as you possibly can. Take your best friend's paw slash hand if need be and smash. And then you take the subscribe button. All right, and you do this. You take your best friend, throw him across the room and hit that subscribe button. And then pick your friend up and make sure he subscribes too. Because we're hitting 16,000 ASAP, all right? So subscribe right now. Can you at least, like, look at me? I'm sorry, man. That's for a video. That's for a video. I didn't mean to throw you, bro. Thank God, what are you going to interview this person on? You didn't even tell us yet. Oh, yeah, shit. Okay. Before I introduce you guys, the smartest intellectual in our planet, I'm going to tell you guys what the video's on. Well, thank God, we have eyes. We can see by the title. You're right, you're right. We're doing a top five decks of the meta. Top five decks. So without further ado, I introduce to you the one and only, the most genius, the most smartest, Nobel Prize winning, smartest, geniusest, genius of the world. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> dollar, dollar. <laughs> dollar, dollar. <laughs> ching, 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 bling, bling, cha, cha, cha. You ain't talking money, then you're talking no matter. Bro, bro, come here. Come here. Come here. Coming. You aren't allowed to do that here. Not everyone gets their own theme song. Kazuki Tickle Your Girl's Coochie had one. No if the guy created Yu-Gi-Oh, what'd you do? I don't care about him. Let's just say I calculated the slope of his girl's curves. <laughs> I'm just joking. He doesn't have a girl. She's a square root of negative one. Not real. <laughs> but if he did have a girl, she'd be a cute one. Triangle joke. Okay, fair, but like, you got an anime profile pic. Trey, if, why do you say that? My love for anime is like, dividing by zero. It can't be defined. It can't be defined. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Okay. Before we get started, guys, uh, according to my calculation, uh, you, you guys should go subscribe, pussies. Sorry, sometimes I get excited. Okay, guys, so my top five decks. Are you ready, Trey? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh! Shut the fuck up. Okay, let's get started, boys. Top five decks of the meta. Number five. Who you got, nerd Triff? Number five. Anyone with a brain would realize this is not a good deck. It was a good deck at the time. It was a good deck a few weeks ago. But it is not a good deck, not jokingly. Salamandrates. It is number five. I don't care what anyone says, there's going to be a lot of people in the comments that are also most likely Jews and don't, can't afford good decks, that just bought three Sartre decks hoping it'll be the best deck. It sucks. I've seen a lot of play at YCS and everything because it was the newest deck. It was the newest deck. This happened in OCG. It was the newest deck. 90% of people bought the deck just for Ash Blossom. Uh, it's, it was the newest deck. It was good at the time. People played it because it was the newest deck, but now people understand the deck. People know how to beat it properly. It is simply not a good deck. It is a good deck. You're right, Salaman, good. It is just a good deck. Sorry if you guys see this. You guys are going to see in the comments, Oh my god, Nerdtriff said that no, Salaman great suck. It does suck. It is, I mean, it is. Oh shit, I just, I'm Nerdtriff, not Girltriff. My bad. 
Guys, it is a good it is a good deck. That's all it is. Just a good deck, and that's it. Uh, it is number five for that reason. People know how to play it now, play against it now. There's so many easy counters to it. Not in terms of side deck cards, but more so in terms of uh, how to play around it. You know what the what the in the gate. Uh, like 99.9999% of the time, you're going to negate the right thing. And when Gazelle stopped the deck, almost loses. It has a great, uh, the deck is great resilience-wise. This is why we put it number 5 and not number 7 or number 8. But it is, there is only 5 decks in the meta. There is no other deck in the meta. Uh, Salamangas could easily win a YCS. It could easily top a YCS. It's a good deck. But nothing else, uh, there's a top 5 deck and then nothing else, the top 5 decks and everything else is way below. Nothing's remotely close to it. So Salamangas is still a good deck. Still play, you can still easily win. But it is not on the level of everything else. It is, it's a tier below the top two or top three decks. But it is definitely in the top five. It's like a top five deck of the game right now. And nothing's remotely close to the top five. So seeing some angry to the top five is uh, good. It's good. Like, it's a good deck. It's definitely top five. And in fact, nothing comes close to some angry. There's a gigantic leap of five and then six. It's like top five at one level. And everything else is way, way, way below. So don't forget that. Uh, it is a great deck. It is a good deck. It is not a great deck. It's a good deck. Uh, I don't mean to fight anyone with it, but it is a good deck. It is number five. It is too easy to play around. Way too overrated, simply because it was a structured deck. Way too overrated. Way too overrated. Any good player would realize this. Uh, and that's my honest opinion, uh, backed by scientific calculation at the Department of Trip Math with all my professors that I'm the lead professor in. I, I, I like that. Analyzation, numbers, math, and shit. Science, let's go. I love it. Number four, who you got? Number four. So I know you're going to roast me for number five, but I don't care because it is scientifically true. It is Salamanga is definitely number five. Number four, uh, this deck is going to be even better in the future after Dark Neo Storm. Orcus, any form of Orcus, pure Orcus with danger, Mermail Orcus, uh, insert any deck that puts two monsters, blank Orcus, any deck that has an Orcus engine, number four. Now this is arguably number three, better than number three pick, but uh, something about Orcus itself, just an incredible, incredible engine. And I think uh, it, it's some, some people are going to say Salamangra is better than I don't think so at all. I take Orcus, any version of Orcus, uh, Water Beats Fire, I'll take Mermail Orcus any day to beat Salads. But really, any version of Orcus, this is backed by scientific proof. Uh, I don't care if uh, just because a deck uh, tops more it doesn't mean it's better. It simply means it's played more, it's cheaper, it's so much more access to Salamangra. Simply, uh, simply because people play Salamangra because it's a structure deck and there's a lot of hype behind it, it doesn't mean it's the best deck or even a top three deck for that matter. Uh, just because it tops the most with it. It's simply because the most, and you can get it, it's, a, it's the most newest deck at the time. Uh, it's like Magical Musketeers. They topped a bunch of times when it first came up, but the deck was garbage. Now, Orca's number four because it's a two-card engine. You can make Mecha Phantom Beast top a regional with it, top win a, win a, win a regional, top YCS with it. So Orca's, the splash ability of it is incredible, and this is not Pendulum Orca's. Pendulum Orca's is a level on its own, which we're going to talk about later. But Orca's in itself is so damn powerful, and it's only going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, if anything, it is uh, top three. Not You cannot put Orcus number five. It is definitely top four plus, And in fact, I was debating putting it even higher than Striker. Orcus is just that good. Strikers is obviously a great deck. It's won three uh, events in a row. But the, the, the deck didn't win the event. Uh, the player won the event. So, Fala Galera. Orcus number four. Well, I agree with four and five totally, 100%. I'd even put number four a little higher, to be honest. But hey, I agree with four and five. Let's see number three, bro. I already know number three, and I know it's going to shock the world. You told me before. I agree wholeheartedly with this one, but this one's going to shock the world. Who you got for number three? Number three, Sky Striker. Now, I know like I was going to say, oh my god, I just went three events. Why is it not number one? I think it's number three. I think the power level of that deck is so low. I beat it so many damn times with Pendulums that it just... It, it is, it's nothing special to me. I understand it, it, it has the most play... At events recently, it won three events in a row. I understand that. Uh, that's amazing for the deck. Good job. But let's not forget that people don't even see... They didn't, for the past few events that they won, uh, even though they've been seeing so much play, they were actually... People don't even expect it. After the first after the first event where uh, Alter Geist were nowhere to be seen, and Strikers were even nowhere to be seen, and all you see is Salad Boys, Thunder Dragons, and like Guard Dragon decks. That's all you saw. And so you just Turbo decks. You didn't even see Striker and Alter Geist, which means... Uh, people aren't even realizing that Imperial Order destroys the deck. People aren't realizing that uh, it's so searchable to get Imperial Order. Griffin, Curious, everything. Uh, Eradicator decks for Trap decks. Like uh, it, It's so damn easy to beat that deck, but people weren't signing correctly for it because they weren't expecting it for the past few events. Simply because they thought it died. They thought with Eradicator coming out, everyone was signing for it. So they didn't see, it didn't see much play. 
So because of that, and slowly now people are realizing, you know, Psycho's actually amazing. There's nothing hitting the deck. People are, are still playing it a lot. Now, after they won three events in a row, now moving forward from this, this is the April format, not the March format. March format, Strikers were actually low-key amazing because no one was prepared for it. Because they thought it dead. It, it was dead because so many cards came back for it. People sided for it. But now that people realize that it's actually a gigantic threat moving forward in April, moving forward the next month, for this month, uh, it is definitely number three. Because every, if anything, is number four. Now everyone knows it's a threat. Now everyone's putting in the appeal order that they can search. Now everyone's putting in the eradicator that they can search. Everyone's putting in the kaijus that they can search. Everyone's putting in the denkos. All these cards, absolutely one card obliterate the deck. Like, it's not like uh, back in the day where, oh, I hope I draw one of my anti-spells to beat this deck. Now it's like, you could search a pre order with any deck. You could search Eradicate with any deck. You could summon, go second, no problem. Those are go first, second, no problem. Draw one of your three Denkos. Draw one of your nine Kaijus, and you auto-win. Like, it, it's, it baffles me that Psychos can actually even win an event. It's because people uh, people aren't prepared for it. Like, you understand when you face Strikers going second, you draw one year nine kaijus, which you should be made, which you should be citing. It was not a good joke at the time. You should be citing nine kaijus. As a lot of things still, you should be citing nine to twelve cards to out it. Three dankos and six nine kaijus. Draw one of them, you auto win against the deck. You literally straight up just auto win. You auto win. People don't realize that. That's why I want to do more analyzation videos because when people understand this, I have no problem beating Strikers. I obliterate Strikers every time I play them. Uh, I let them go first. I let them, even if they let me go first, it don't, don't matter. Like, you, you, if you play a combo, if you play any number, the number one and number two deck, no shit, it's going to be Pend and, and Pend, Pend, Pendulum Orcus and any version of Sayuja Turbo, but with Thunder Dragon. So Thunder Chaos, Sayuja Turbo, Guard Dragon, dot deck. Any of these decks that are the actual best decks can search and out to destroy any other decks that I have already have a name. Anyways, Strike is the number three. People will soon realize it when you start watching my analyzation videos and actually... Have a break. Yeah, I know I just won three events in a row, but no, Strikers didn't win. Fala Galera, all right? It's not the deck, it's the player, all right? Now, number two, this one uh, is going to be crazy because, bro, I don't know what you're going to pick, Nerdtriff. Like, are you going to pick Pendulum, or Pendulum Orcus or are you going to pick uh, Thunder Chaos, Guard Dragon, etc., etc. deck? This is a tough one. I know I got Pendulum. I got Pendulum. But you, you're the numbers guy, so you're the analyzation, and I guess the English guy too. But who you got for number two, bro? Number two, Pendulum. Now, this is not pure Pendulum. Pure Pendulum would be number five. Pure. If we're talking pure decks right now, we're putting Orcus dot deck number two, Striker three, and Pendulum number four. But I've decided to put this at number at number two simply because Pendulum Orcus, a combination of Pendulum and Orcus, is something beautiful. People don't realize this. People just simply don't test it. They see a bunch of non-Pendulums and think it sucks. But this deck is superior going first and going second. And it's just so damn good. It is so damn good. It breaks any board, puts some unbreakable boards. It's a better going second, a better through hand drops, a better in any possible way. And it doesn't, people will see uh, hands that's like uh, two Pendulums and three non-Pendulums. Oh my God, it breaks. But that hand equals four negates. It's just people don't understand the power of how to do it. And going second is the same thing. Because they'll hand chop your, your pendulum stuff and not only you play Orcus. And then you go to memory combo and OTK them with Boral Sword. So after they use three interruptions to stop your pendulum summon, right? Like, all you need two mods. It's so damn easy to do it. People just don't realize the power. When I get unbanned, pray to God that Mermaid doesn't get banned. By the time I come back, I will destroy everyone with this. I can see. Now, like I said, pendulum, pure pendulum number five. And if it was just, we're talking pure decks here. I would bump everything up. I'd put Orcus dot deck at number two, Striker three, Solid four, Pendulum five. If it was pure Pendulum, but it's not pure Pendulum. It's a Pendulum Orcus. People still don't realize the power. Just play for yourselves. You have a brain. You don't gotta look at. Oh my God, Pendulum Orcus doesn't top. It's because people don't top with. Don't play it. People don't play it. And when they do play, uh, play with, play it. It's like they play some shitty version. Play my Pendulum Orcus version, and if it, arguably it's the best deck. Arguably it's the best deck. And it's not me being biased. This is me being brutally honest. Scientifically proven by. Uh, Nerd trip, my nerd trip, okay? Number two, arguably number one, but Pen Orcus, any Orcus deck could arguably be, be number two, but we're putting Pendulum Orcus. I think uh, Pure Striker is better than Pure Orcus, but Pendulum Orcus is on another level, and it's not me boosting, I'm just being brutally honest. Pendulum Orcus is absolutely remarkable. It is number two. I don't care if it has no tops, it's because people don't play it. If anything, it doesn't mean it's the best deck because it tops the most or because it has the most tops or it wins. It doesn't matter. It, it that has nothing to do with anything, actually. In fact, scientifically proven, truth math time, scientifically proven. Here's some math for you guys. If if there's one, if, if there's one person, okay, Michael Jordan, okay? 
No, it's a bad example. I'll give you an example right here. If there's one best deck in the world and only one person knows that it's the best deck, only one person knows it because he doesn't show the world, i.e. me, except I do show the world, you just choose not to play it or you suck with the deck. Uh, if that's the best deck in the world for sure. Just imagine, in a, even in a retrospe retrospect, even in a parallel universe, just imagine it's the best deck in the world. He doesn't go to an event with it and other decks win. Just because he doesn't go to that event, that doesn't mean that that deck's not the best. It simply means that that deck wasn't tested in an event with a good pilot and it didn't, it didn't have an opportunity to show us the best deck in the world. So it is number two, arguably number one. And you guys will notice September 13th that I'm right. That is number two for sure, if anything, number one. I know, bro, I picked Pendulum number number one, bro. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that being number two. I do, I personally pick Pendulum number one. But hey, you're the unbiased uh, genius uh, in our group here. So who you got for number one, bro? Number one is Thunder Chaos. You can put any Saryusha Chaos Dragon, Guard Dragon dot deck here. But the best engine is with Thunders, all right? If you want to go pure Thunder, I'll put that alongside Pendulum at number five. If it was pure. But we're not talking about pure here. If you want a like, Chaos Dragon, Saryusha Turbo, Guard Dragon Turbo with Thunders in it. That's number one. If you want to go Chaos Dragon Turbo with Blue Eyes in it, that could arguably be number one as well. This deck is absolutely nuts, especially when you chain box Saryuja. Even if, if, if Saryuja gets Ash, it doesn't matter because you got the mini Chaos Dragon, summon, and you just go off. Saryuja needs to go to one because the deck's absolutely nuts. It's number one, better than Pendulum Orcas, even I'm saying that. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, even Red Eyes, Thun Red Eyes Chaos, Guard Dragon, Saryuja is number one. Uh, like anything with, with Guard Dragons and Saryuja, Turbo, with dangers in it is number one, and like dangers are in, like any orca deck, any thunder, any uh, Saryuja deck, it, it's amazing. Uh, th dangers itself is not the problem. It's the fact that they can make Saryuja so easily, guard dragon so easily. If these cards can ban, like get hit, dangers aren't even the issue. So thunder chaos number one is thunder is just the best version to play it. But you can even throw ABCs in here. I'm testing ABC, but with it, it's so fire. Throw blue, blue eyes, it's still amazing. But number one, thunder chaos guard dragon. Dot deck. You heard it from the man. The guy's a genius. He wears glasses. He's a genius. Smarter than Scott Steiner. Smarter than them all. No one thought that was possible. Guys, top five decks of the meta. Absolutely no bias. I'm telling you guys right now, Pendulum is the second best deck. Pendulum Orcus, that is. It is just that people don't know how to play it. And with Heratic coming out, oh, with Heratic Link, oh my god. The deck is absolutely amazing. It is my complete top five unbiased list. If it was biased, I'd make Pendulum number one. I mean, Nerd Trip will make Pendulum number one. And we are separate entities. I don't know who this guy is in their trip. He definitely has a beautiful beard, facial structure, biceps, triceps, abs. I also heard that he has a really big deck. Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Because he plays 60 cards. That's it for you guys. Hope you like it. Nerd Triff, thank you for coming on to our channel. Thank you, Triff. You're sweeter than 3.141519. New videos coming every single weekday, guys. Hope you guys like the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out all the links in the description. And who knows, maybe you guys will see more of Kazuki Makuchi and more of Nerd Shrift soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. See you guys in the next video. Peace.